Mobility impairment refers to a broad range of disabilities that include orthopedic, neuromuscular, cardiovascular, and pulmonary disorders. In general, mobility impairment applies to people with difficulties moving, controlling, or coordinating movement of the body. Causes for mobility impairment may include accident, heredity, disease, and aging. Mobility impairment may also be a temporary condition, a broken leg or arm, for example. In the U.S., approximately 5.1% of the population aged 18 to 64 has some limitation associated with ambulatory activities of the lower body, including difficulty walking, using a wheelchair, cane, crutches, or walker. Aging is also a significant factor if we consider that this figure jumps to 22.6% of the U.S. population for those 65 years of age and over. Approximately 20 million people, 15 years and older, roughly 8.2%, had difficulty with physical tasks related to upper body functioning, including difficulty lifting and grasping. And globally, according to World Health Organization estimates, approximately 75 million people need a wheelchair. Broadly speaking, mobility impairment may be divided into two major categories. Traumatic injuries, which include conditions such as spinal cord injury, stroke, or loss or damage of one or more limbs, and diseases and congenital conditions, which include impairments like cerebral palsy, muscular dystrophy, Parkinson's disease, and some debilitating forms of arthritis. As we'll see later in this lesson, people with mobility disabilities can take advantage of a wide variety of assistive technology ranging from mobility aids to specialized software and hardware equipment. Functional limitations of individuals with motor impairment can include weakness, reduced or compromised muscular control, such as involuntary movements, lack of coordination or paralysis, limitations of sensation, joint problems, mobility impairment brought about by missing limbs, and pain that impedes movement. Mobility impairment can affect the hands and arms as well as other parts of the body. Individuals with quadriplegia, loss of function to the legs, arms, and torso, typically have limited to no use of their hands, for example, and this is also true of individuals who have lost the use of both arms. People with paraplegia have a loss of function to the legs and lower body. Individuals with cerebral palsy have experienced a traumatic injury to the brain that usually occurs during fetal development or shortly after birth. In general, people with cerebral palsy have decreased muscle control. That may involve muscle tightness and spasms, involuntary movement, and impaired speech. Other diseases and congenital forms of mobility impairment like muscular dystrophy, muscular sclerosis, and Lou Gehrig's disease, also known as amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, involve different forms of progressive muscle or nerve degeneration that lead to specific functional limitations. With muscular dystrophy, a genetic disorder that affects the proteins responsible for forming healthy muscle, individuals experience a progressive weakening of the muscles. Some eventually lose the ability to walk, while others may have difficulty breathing or swallowing. While muscular dystrophy affects the proteins that build muscles, multiple sclerosis and Lou Gehrig's disease affect the nerves that control the muscles. Individuals with MS may experience functional limitations like unstable walking, tremors, weakness or numbness, spasms, stiffness, and impaired speech and memory. While those with Lou Gehrig's disease gradually lose their ability to use their hands and arms, along with their ability to speak and swallow. Parkinson's disease is a progressive disorder of the central nervous system that affects the body's motor system. Depending on how advanced the disease is, individuals with Parkinson's may have uncontrollable tremors and rigidity in the muscles and sometimes swallowing and speech disorders. In addition to functional limitations brought about by muscular or nerve degeneration, there are other physical disorders that can cause pain sufficient enough to reduce or prohibit movement. 
Although there are many forms of arthritis, for instance, it is a condition that's generally caused by the painful inflammation of the joints. People with arthritis may experience joint pain or fatigue that limits their ability to type or move, and in more severe cases, it may lead to the inability to use one or both hands or to walk. Arthritis manifests itself most frequently as part of the aging process, although it can also affect younger people. People with mobility impairment frequently have poor muscle control, which can lead to difficulty walking, sensing, grasping, reaching, making fine motor movements with fingers, uh, difficulty doing complex or compound manipulations, such as pushing while turning a doorknob or pressing several buttons simultaneously, difficulty operating controls that require pinching or rotating, and an inability to exert much force on controls. When it comes to computer use, people with motor disabilities affecting the hands or arms aren't able to use a standard mouse. Instead, they might use a specialized mouse or keyboard with a layout of keys optimized to their range of hand motion or a pointing device such as a head mouse, a head pointer, or a mouth stick, voice recognition software, or other assistive technologies customized to their abilities and conditions. When accessing electronic information, they may need to activate commands by typing single keystrokes in sequence with a head pointer, for example, instead of typing simultaneous keystrokes. There may also be more time needed when filling out interactive forms uh, because they have to concentrate or maneuver carefully to select each keystroke. Individuals with paraplegia paralysis of the legs generally have no difficulty accessing electronic information, while those with quadriplegia, paralysis of the legs and arms, typically have limited to no use of their hands. Although those who've lost one hand are still able to manipulate a mouse or operate a keyboard, people who've lost both limbs, like those with quadriplegia, may not be able to manipulate a standard mouse or keyboard. There are hundreds of products designed to assist people with mobility impairments. Some people with ambulatory mobility impairments may use walkers, canes, crutches, or braces, while others may use manual or power wheelchairs or electric scooters. People with mobility disabilities typically choose the mobility device that best suits their needs. For example, some people may choose a manual wheelchair rather than a power wheelchair because it enables them to maintain upper body strength. People with quadriplegia, or loss of function to all four limbs and torso, will often use motorized wheelchairs, while people with paraplegia often use a manual wheelchair and have full movement of arms and hands. When it comes to ways of interacting with information technology, a good portion of assistive technology is typically designed to allow interaction through the keyboard or by emulating the keyboard. Here are a few examples. The head wand allows a person to point to a specific spot on a touch screen or keypad. This enables navigating or typing or connecting with other communication devices. The wand is strapped to the person's head and because of this arrangement, fatigue can be a factor for people who frequently use the head wand. The mouse stick provides the same functionality as the head wand. A person uses it by clenching it in between their teeth and touching the touch screen or keyboard. Some models can be shaped to a person's dental work. Sip and pub switches are popular for people who have limited or no motor abilities. The Sip Puff technology works to operate switch activated devices, including wheelchairs. This system interprets the person's breath actions, a simple puff or sip, as on off signals that allow them to control the actions of the device they're interacting with. The switch can either be configured through a head strap or a gooseneck arrangement. Single or dual switches are, as the name implies, simple on-off mechanisms. However, when connected to electronic devices, they allow the user to operate on a more advanced level, such as navigating and indicating choices through appropriate software. For computer access, switches are often used in conjunction with other input devices. And you can see a great example of switches in action in this module in the Readings and Resources page, which provides a link to a video of Sadie Paulson, a video editor who uses switch controls to create her videos. 
Adaptive keyboards can be made in such a way as to facilitate low vision, blind, and mobility impaired users. An adaptive keyboard will often be brightly colored, and large keys are also helpful for wand users and for users with fine motor control problems. Many keyboard models come with overlays that help various types of disabilities, and some adaptive keyboards even come with their own proprietary software that increases the functionality of the keyboard. Eye tracking technology allows users who have little or no mobility control to communicate with the outside world. Special software can also help autocomplete words or terms to help speed things up. Modern eye trackers work through video cameras and specialized lighting systems. Light emitting diodes are used to illuminate the corneal surface of the eye, which gives extremely detailed, fine geometric information. And through this information and software, eye tracking system scans compute spatial positions and enable the user to interact with the computer screen. Other alternative systems may combine several different assistive technologies to address multiple needs. Stephen Hawking, the world-renowned theoretical physicist and cosmologist, had paralysis as a result of amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. But he was able to control his computer through cheek movements. In turn, his cheek movements triggered an infrared switch attached to his glasses that allowed him to select text characters on the screen in front of him, which could then be rendered as text or digital speech output. Finally, voice recognition software like Dragon Speech Recognition can enable people with mobility impairments to control their computer applications, compose email, edit various document files, and more. As we wrap up this lesson, let's take a minute to recall some of the key points. The first of which is that mobility impairment refers to a broad range of disabilities that include orthopedic, neuromuscular, cardiovascular, and pulmonary disorders. In general, mobility impairment applies to people with difficulties moving, controlling, or coordinating movement of the body. While mobility impairment may be caused by traumatic injury, such as spinal cord injury, stroke, or loss of one or more limbs, it may also be the result of illness and congenital conditions, such as cerebral palsy, muscular dystrophy, Parkinson's disease, and arthritis. There's a wide variety of products designed to assist people with mobility impairments. Some people with ambulatory mobility impairments may use walkers, canes, crutches, or braces, while others may use manual or power wheelchairs or electric scooters. Although there are different kinds of mobility impairment, when it comes to computer use and interacting with information technology, assistive technology is typically designed to allow interaction through the keyboard or by emulating the keyboard with devices like mouse sticks, head wands, switches, sip and pop switches, eye trackers, and voice recognition software. Finally, content creators and developers should be aware of the factors that can make their content more accessible to the keyboard. As we'll learn later in later lessons, this may involve considerations like visible indication of cursor focus to facilitate keyboard navigation without the use of a mouse, or using logical tabbing order that reflects the visual order on the screen. Overall, as you consider the various methods for designing accessible digital materials later in this course, you'll want to keep in mind what we've learned in this module about people with mobility impairments their special functional challenges, and the kinds of assistive technology they use.